If you're self-hosting an NetN and charging your clients money for it, then you'll definitely want to watch this first before you get in trouble. There's been a lot of confusion around what is allowed and not allowed when it comes to self-hosting an NetN and monetizing it. So in this video, I want to clear things up. I want to discuss with you a couple of examples of what is actually allowed in terms of the terms of service and how you can actually run a profitable business while using NetN as the driver of your business in the background without running into compliance issues. So by the end of the video, I'll hope you will have three things, a better understanding of the NetN terms of service, practical examples on how you can actually self-host it and offer it as a like a micro SaaS and when not, and how you can actually use it to make money regardless of any setup that might come your way without running into any compliance issues. So if you're here for the first time, my name is Surab. I run an AI development agency based in Berlin and I share my experience here on YouTube. Let's get into it. So first of all, I would love to discuss this very beautiful document here that caused me a lot of pain to understand what I can and cannot do. And this question actually came from uh, my school community where one person was trying to self-host NetN and trying to sell it to other people. And he started being a little bit nervous into uh, this topic of knowing, okay, what am I allowed to do? Or what am I not allowed to do? And then I created a Reddit post uh, discussing, basically summarizing this document for people in very clear examples. Although they actually also show us here like a very simple examples of what is technically allowed and not allowed. Um, and to my shocking, um, the post went a little bit viral, uh, around 30, 40 K views for this post, a lot of engagement. So it seems to be a question that is not only in my community, but, uh, in generally on the global community of NetN, there's a lot of confusion onto what you can and what you cannot do. And on this stage, I would love to maybe discuss a little bit what is the sustainable use uh, license. As many of you have heard, yes, NetN is open source tool. However, there is a limit to how you can uh, use this. For example, you can use or modify the software only for your own internal business purpose or for non-commercial or personal use. So here is like the first red flag you might freak out is like, hey, how can I not use NetN for a non-commercial use and just a personal use? How am I able to sell NetN as a service? And you're right. I mean, here it's a little bit confusing. So I would say rather than reading <laughs> legal words and getting confused, uh, let me just show you exactly what, what do they mean under this uh, new license that they introduced. This is actually something new. I think in 2022, they oh here. Yeah. 2022, they updated this uh, license. I think previously it was maybe fully open source. And ever since then, there are some things that are not allowed. So the first thing, what do you think is not allowed? Of course, if let's say you self-host NetN and then you give your client maybe a login credential and you say, hey, go use NetN on my servers. Uh, this is, of course, not uh, allowed. And you can say, okay, it makes sense. You're technically avoiding the client to pay for the cloud version from NetN and they go through you rather than going for the cloud. And I think NetN doesn't want that. And um, I think it's this one here. So uh, hosting it and charging people money for it. So they don't really uh, want to do that. Um, the white labeling NNN offer it to your customers for money. Here is where it gets a little bit uh, confusing. Okay, what is the difference between these two things? I'm going to share with you in a second. So I think you will be able to understand more what do they mean by these wordings if we read like these examples. So one thing that is allowed to be used if you want to self-host NNN is you want to connect it to your company. Let's say you have a CRM, you have a Gmail, you have all these lovely services that we love using in NetN, and you want to use some automations. You want to have email autoresponder, you want to have one push of a button, attract all the leads in your CRM and send them a personal message generated with AI, or you want to, I don't know, do some crazy stuff, have a chatbot on your website uh, that is connected to your Google Calendar, that is booking appointments. So all these things, uh, of course, you can go through the self-hosting route for your own business and um, use self-hosting and at end with their um, license. The other thing that you can use is that people refer to as the backbone of your SaaS is that if you have a SaaS and you want to use services or like functions or nodes that developed in N8N, to sustain your own SaaS, then this is also uh, fine. What does that mean? Like, let's say your SaaS would require some agents uh, to 
uh, do some thinking. So there's a lot of uh, development that went into agents on N8N and you have to build uh, the whole workflow, maybe also connected to your Gmail address or stuff like that. Again, anything that is connected to your own business is definitely allowed. It's not a problem and you can definitely use it. The next thing that one of the things that you can actually use to provide it, provide services to businesses using N8N is if you want to do consulting services. So for example, a client would build or self-host their own N8N workflow. And they connect it to their business. For example, the client owns the cloud and the client um, connect his N8N workflow with his email and CRM. And then you come as a consultant or an AI development agency or practitioner. Uh, you would enter this workflow, design it for them, and then maybe leave. And, or maybe have like a constant access to this. But the person who's owning this whole thing is the business owner. So this is one of the ways that you can actually start to be able to work with the self-hosting of N at N. But who, the person who is self-hosting it is not you, but your clients. And this is how you can avoid uh, this uh, issue. So here they also added uh, two examples that uh, clarify what do, uh, what do they mean that you are not allowed. So Bob, let's say you. You set up an n n to collect user's Housepop credential to sync data to ASME app with data in HubSpot. Not allowed under the sustainable use uh, license. So what does that mean? So that means you're self-hosting n n and the client send you their HubSpot credentials and they told you, please sync my HubSpot uh, data in this app with the data in HubSpot. So the client shared credentials with you to be able to fulfill a certain role and this is the first thing that is technically not allowed so think of it as if a client if i'm self-hosting the nn and a client send me their gmail credential or google sheets or whatever whenever you hear like oh i need to get credential from the client and you're self-hosting the nn yourself this is where you should maybe raise a red flag in your head and say like hey i think this is not allowed so i don't know if i can actually do that but for example, if you create a chatbot that is connected to your own company's credential, for example, you have your own vector database saying you like as a, the person hosted, self-hosting the N at N, let's say you have Superbase account that you're also in charge of, and then you connect N at N to the Superbase account, and then the Superbase has the vector data, and the users only see the chatbots, they don't send you any credentials, nothing, and then they just access you as a service, then this is technically allowed. And then use that then as a frame of mind, like, okay, I believe um, a service that I can use and provide in N at N in a self-hosting setup should involve a way where I'm not receiving any credentials from my clients and I'm providing them, imagine it as like a SaaS where you j they just see the front end, they don't even understand what's going on on the back end, they don't even connect you with anything that they have, then you're absolutely in the clear. You can use N8N, it saves you some time uh, rather than building stuff custom code with Python or whatever, Node.js or whatever custom code that you need to do. So this is now, I hope this has became clearer. I can show you maybe an ex a practical example. So a practical example that I've done um, is a lead, uh, lead gen project, for example, where a customer, maybe they only have access to uh, this preview. They can specify what kind of leads do they want. And the end result would be, even if you give them access to this um, air table, that, 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 that should be fine. But whatever they have access to is only they add some data and then they receive like the lead that are qualified, the lead that are not qualified and stuff like that. Now, where can you get in trouble? Let's say like you have here a personal message that you want to send. These clients want to also send these messages automatically and they say, hey, I will give you access to my email. Can you also send these uh, using your software? This is where the limitation starts. So you cannot do that. But what you can do, you can say to your client, hey, I have the system, I can charge you one setup fee, and then I can build it for you in your environment, in your self-hosting, and then I can then connect it to your email, and then we can automate your business using this logic that I've built. And this is how it actually goes in, uh, in praxis. So uh, people would hire you for a custom job. Uh, they maybe set up their own things. It's sometimes some clients that I work with, they have their own IT departments. Uh, some of them uh, prefer just to go directly to the to the cloud route. So they buy a, a cloud account in N8N and then they just add you as a 
developer and then you can just enter do your thing and then leave so i think i now already mentioned the three options that you have if you want to deliver ai automations using n at n the first option is if you self-host n at n you can provide limited services for your clients. It usually shouldn't overlap with any credentials that your clients share. You can't connect to their businesses, but you can offer them something that maybe does research on the back end, maybe a chatbot that connected to a custom knowledge base and stuff like that. That is technically open. The second option you have is that the client self host N at N. They add you to the project, you enter this project and then do your thing, do your magic, do the workflow. You get paid for the workflow, you get paid for the whole delivery of the project and then even if you after that period you decide on some maintenance fee which i would definitely recommend you can have these credentials shared with you and you can just enter these the clients uh, servers and then fix the things here it makes it a little bit more complicated imagine maybe you sell to 50 clients with 50 different credentials so you can start seeing how this becomes a little bit of a hassle what I would recommend is to have some password managers for the different clients. So, of course, um, it makes things a little bit easier, but it's still, I would say, a little bit complicated. So you need to document where all the URLs are for the different clients. But you can see, you can start seeing the limitation of self-hosting or just working with N at N in general. There are limitations that stops you from scaling. So maybe you start thinking, okay, how can I offer the same thing using maybe Python or something that I... I don't really care and I don't have limitation in the delivery because I believe nobody's talking about this online and it's just so fascinating that people say you can sell to 100 clients and you see like you're very limited by the amount of use cases that you can sell this to a enough number of clients that can maybe make you a good amount of money or sustainable business. The third option that you actually have is the client buy a cloud account at N at N which I would also recommend better than the client self-hosting their own NTN solution because self-hosting, if the client doesn't have an IT team, it will be a pain, a pain to like self-host this and then manage the whole servers. Maybe they can outsource this to you and you say like, hey, you own the cloud, I can manage it for you and then make sure everything works out. But yeah, I mean, the easiest option would be that they just buy an account, invite you as a developer or as a member of this account, and then you just build them there. Uh, there is a fourth option, which is I think the most expensive. If you can contact N at N and then say, I want a enterprise license to offer your services to multiple clients. I haven't done it myself, to be honest, but technically you don't self-host N at N, but you use their cloud solution, but then you can connect different clients to that cloud. Now, that's something that I haven't explored uh, personally, but I read some information about it and it could be also a potential option for you to go into or just migrate from n at n and start building things uh, from scratch um, you would lose some of the easy integrations with maybe gmail and stuff like that but most of the stuff you can rebuild with custom code using python and slowly move away from n at n i hope you enjoyed this video i tried to explain it as uh, precise as i can you see it's a little bit uh, interesting topic it's also very topic that spiraled a lot of conversations and I hope I understood it well to explain it well for you. Uh, but if you have further questions, make sure to add them in the comments. And if you also have some other insights that you think I have missed, also please add them in the comments and educate us as a community. And I really appreciate these kind of suggestions and like additions into the knowledge. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.